Hey, hey, party people. Let's look at some spring 2023 couture shows. The waist is back and oversize is gone. Tailoring is back. Bodycon, not really, but real more sculptural than before. You know, uh, even a house like Chanel that is known for boxy suits is doing fit and flare and body skimming, not body con, but close to the body looks. As for colors, you know, couture has always done a lot of black because black just lends elegance to a category that is innately more elegant than other categories. But the color story here is a lot of pastel tone, light muted pastels, strong yellows throughout, but predominantly soft and light colors. And I did tell y'all, soft lavenders and lilacs, especially those with a bit of an acid bite, would be major this year. And lo and behold, it was all over the couture runways. The accessory of the season were gloves and so many different kinds of gloves in many different fabrications from many different houses. Another color story is metallics, uh, metallic threads in embroidery from all over metallic fabrics to metallic touches to other materials that give a metallic feel. Metallics were also everywhere. Let's look at some shows. Maison Sarah Schreibe. And I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly. Please correct me if you are Moroccan also. Uh, Sarah Schreibe is Moroccan and she is a former architect. And you can see many of her silhouettes and interior shapes were influenced by the steel frameworks of buildings as they're going up. And there is a lot of usage of these interwoven cords that are made from thousands of strands of sabra. It's a type of silk made from aloe vera plants. And these kinds of cords are used in traditional Moroccan passementry. I love this collection so much. It's just really beautiful. And it just has these really beautiful embellishments that we don't see all over the place. It, it, it like straddles the line between sparse, but still decorative. The shapes are so beautiful. The textures with the cords, just stunning. Next is Miss Sohi. I love this collection. Absolute Georgia O'Keeffe vibes, not in the fact that, you know, you see vajayjays everywhere, but Georgia O'Keeffe vibes in that just saturated with femininity vibes. Okay. Emphasis on the feminine parts of the body, the way things are cupping, very lush, sort of yonic shapes, exaggerating the feminine, stronger colors than some of the other collections, but still a lot of pastels that are really enriched with a lot of black and the strong yellows. And, you know, she's still using elements that she's used before. She's building her house codes. So, you know, pearls, shells, you know, her stuff always reminds me of Aphrodite on the half shell, more lush feminine references, but like glowing strength, owning her sexuality, just really beautiful. This is Hater Ackerman for Jean-Paul Gaultier. And in the runway notes, he said he wanted to focus on JPG's impeccable tailoring and dressmaking that sometimes gets forgotten. You know, people know him so well. Uh, you know, there's the theatrics and there's the Frenchiness of everything and his scandalous perfume bottles. But really, really, JPG was an incredible tailor and dressmaker. And Ackerman wanted to focus on those things. You know, the nipped in waist, the impeccable tailoring. You could slice open my neck with some of these cuts. Amazing. I love the waist emphasis. I love how there are all these different subtle textures created with different kinds of pleating. And is this, is 
Honestly, is this the sexiest butcher you've ever seen? I love it. Next is Ellie Saab. Listen, Ellie Saab is where you go when you see a bunch of ugly stuff in life, in fashion, and you just need your eyes to just rest softly on something that you know is just going to be beautiful. It's not high concept. It's not mm, avant-garde. It's not, you know, it's just beautiful. That's it. It's just beautiful. Just beauty. Well, what else are you going to say about Ellie Sop? Like just classy intricate incredible craftsmanship just very feminine okay uh this collection was inspired by thailand which explains the broad panels crossing the body and this is his second time doing menswear uh the last time he did it he said it was supposed to be a one-off but it became really high demand so here we are he's continuing with the menswear and i think it's beautiful Okay, listen, the only reason I bring up Chanel is it just, oh, it makes me sad that a house like Chanel with the resources to the best materials and uh, workers in the world end up with collections like these. And another thing that makes me sad is like, oh, they have some incredible fabrications, okay? Look at the close-ups of some of these fabrications and tell me what a dream it would be to work with these fabrications. And then they get slapped on these silhouettes and it just makes me sad, okay? It just does, okay? Look at deer, it's like little deer. And this one has birds. And yeah, I mean, a couple of these pieces are really nice, these last two, but look at them. They don't even look like they belong to Chanel and they don't even look like they belong in the same collection. Next is Fendi and I I already said in the beginning that there are a lot of pastels on the runway this this season. You know, there's pastels and then there's these pastels. They look like the paint water after you painted them pastels from other collections. The construction is poor. And honestly, <sighs> dear Kim Jones, do you know what breasts are and how to make them look nice? The, the style lines either sag the breasts, cut across the breasts awkwardly, um, create these weird tangentials in the middle with the strapping and the style lines. Like, do you know what breasts are? Sir, someone DM me this dress and said it reminded them of my Watch Me Design Season 2 collection, which I find an interesting comment. <laughs> I know where they're coming from. I, I see where they're coming from. If you're following that video series, maybe you can see it too. But this is so sloppy that I don't think it was quite the compliment that they had intended. This is the one dress I like, this last one. It has that airy, floaty feeling that I think Kim Jones was trying to capture with the rest of the collection, but didn't quite achieve until he got to this dress. This is Scaparelli, and I saw some comments where they were saying that Scaparelli looked like Chanel this season, and I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Okay, first of all, Chanel is known for boxy silhouettes, so these really sculpted waist emphasis pieces, not it. They look more like Dior than anything, like Dior new look, the bark jacket. But, you know, Elsa Scaparelli had her own, like, building the body and working with the body and a woman's curves all on her own. I found it especially funny because if you are a fashion geek like me, it's pretty common knowledge that Elsa Scaparelli and Coco Chanel hated each other's guts. So to look at a Scaparelli curl collection and be like, oh, that looks like Chanel. Oh, my God. Elsa is like rolling over in her grave right now. The animal heads. I know they're fake. I know they're fake. OK. But the whole look still gives me, you know, rude white guy shooting lions and taking obnoxious uh, pictures and posting them to his Facebook like, har har, I shot this beast. Like, mm, I don't know. 
I do love these suits that are an homage to Salvador Dali, who was often seen in pinstripes. And I think the matador outfit is an, also a hat tip to Dali's Spanish heritage. Very cool. This Victor and Rolf collection, I am generally a fan of their work. And this technique, the techniques used to create these, you know, gravity defying feats of engineering. I mean, they're, the technique is really incredible, but I don't know. <sighs> you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when plus size girls shop in a store because they heard that that brand carries plus size, but then the store itself doesn't carry the plus sizes in store. Um, they have to order them online. And so at the store, all they can do is hold up a dress to themselves in front of a mirror. Like, I don't know. My brain just went there. It's like, eh. Is it Robert Woon or One? Either way, very interesting collection. And uh, the theme was fear. And I fear that I am not ready for a return to peplums. The cutting is impeccable. These tailored drapes, this gray coat, be still my heart, chef's kiss, superstar. Um, this token thick model is such an eye roll, but just thematically interesting um go look at the rest of the collection a lot of interesting things happening here really strong excellent cutting and that is my okator spring 2023 wrap up let me know your thoughts in the comments below but you know keep it keep it respectful and kind to each other okay um and uh please like share, subscribe, all the ways you show me love, and I will see you in the next video.